Hi there. So glad you're part of the show tonight. Now, which is worse, the Rio Olympics or the 2016 election? That's the big question I'm going to put to my turbocharged party panel tonight. It's Jillian Turner. She's a Fox News contributor and former White House Security Council staffer from two administrations. Comedian Jimmy Fela is here, fresh off his Philadelphia victory at the DNC, where we were also joined by Matt Welch, who's the Reason Magazine editor at large. Mm -hmm. He's a political expert and my good friend. Welcome, everybody. Hi. 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 It's great to be here, and, and thank you for uh, giving me back the, the title. I appreciate yes. that, Jimmy. <laughs> Believe Always. Me. All right, so uh, here we are. It's very easy to compare the Olympics right. and the election because they both seem very disastrous at this point. Do we want them both to go badly somehow, secretly? Is that the greatest wish? I always root for Olympics to go terribly, with the exception of the one great Olympics in our lifetime, which we all know is Los Angeles, California. 1984. Perfect Amen. in every great possible execution. Uh, way. Great Nailed the landing. And in fact, uh, most of the, uh, of the last Olympics have been kind of disappointing in not being bad enough. Yeah. Like, I really wanted the Russian Olympics to Sochi face Sochi was supposed to be awful. Right? There and were feral dogs, and there were supposed to be electrical mess. fires and mass mugging. Maybe Maybe the Greek Olympics uh, caused that whole country to uh, burn up in flames and go bankrupt later, I guess. But even then, it was it's kind of unsatisfying. So I think we're all wishing that it goes badly or as badly as the election has gone yeah. here. The, uh, I, uh, sadly, I, I think this, this election is even worse than all the other elections that we've had maybe since 1972, and the same could be said about the election. All right, so, so which is worse? I mean, if you're comparing apples to grapefruits, uh, <laughs> the Olympics or the election? I actually say the Olympics are worse because they had seven years to prepare for this. Mm -hmm. They found out they were winning in 2009. This is going to be the only they game cried, they're like, oh, Brazil, on the beach, on Impedima Beach. Brazil. This is going to be the only Olympics where the torch is actually a tiki torch to keep away the bugs. <laughs> oh, it's a <laughs> citronella torch. Yeah, they don't even have a flame. It's actually a bug zapper at the front of the stadium. <laughs> it's just going to hear zapping over all the competition sounds during the thing. It's That's terrible. That's really funny. They could replace the, the normal opening ceremony pyrotechnics yeah. with uh, yeah, DDT bombs. But I love it because they're like, yeah, well, after all the bad talk, the Olympics are expected to go off without a hitch. Yeah, and also without indoor plumbing, <laughs> you know, running water. You know what? There, there was a story where uh, one of the athlete compounds in the Olympic Village had to be evacuated yeah. for whatever reason. And uh, so everyone left in a hurry. The Australians came back and had been robbed. Yeah, they got robbed. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, hmm. yeah, Usually you get they robbed by the judges. The, federal, yeah. the feral dogs and that everybody would focus on that. I think that's going to be. They're so, from I mean, like the, the health crisis. There's so much <laughs> to focus on because there are, there's talks of terrorist threats. There's a floating dead horse. <laughs> body parts washing up in the waterways. It's true. It's true. A Zika all of this is true. Uh -huh. And then you've got the, the threat of workers who are going to strike and protest because they haven't been paid. Yes. They don't but have yet it's funds also for their not as bad as FIFA. Like when FIFA goes in somewhere yeah. for the World Cup, uh -huh. like I was in South Africa before and after 2010, yeah. the place is destroyed mm. afterwards. And yeah. people yeah. are like cleaning up the financial mess. The, the Where was the last World Cup? I mean, in Brazil! Right. Yeah. Why did they, they give them both? <laughs> we know what you guys need. <laughs> <laughs> Remember how that completely destroyed your economy and now political corruption is rampant? Tough love. Round two. But I am excited because the U.S. is favored in the 200-meter fly swat. Uh, we're also the favorites in the, uh, the women's backstroke sludge bath. And on that note, Donald Trump is ruffling feathers on multiple continents, but he's impressed grizzled Republican actor and director Clint Eastwood. When asked about Mr. Trump, Eastwood said he's on to something. Because secretly, everybody's getting tired of political correctness. Kissing up. That's the kiss-ass generation we're in right now. <laughs> Thank you, Clint. All right, so, uh, Jillian, is Clint right about this being the kiss-ass generation, or is he out of his mind? No, he's right to an, an extent, but what I don't like about it is what I, as much as sort of liberals use being overly PC and people on the right feel that it's kind of a trap, mm -hmm. I think now... People on the left are starting to rightly feel the same thing about conservatives who are pushing back and saying you never have to be PC. Does the president of the United States or the Republican candidate for the president of the United States need to watch it a little bit? I think he does. And I think that everybody would be better served if he was at least respectful. Yeah, or, or rational. I mean, I, I think, uh, I think we're, we're creating this false paradigm. 
and and it, somehow it doesn't exist. Like you can say whatever you want. You can be the worst person in the world. No. You can head the KKK because you're not politically correct, and being politically incorrect yes. is better than anything yeah, in the it's world. Not, it's not politically incorrect to say that uh, Russia is not in Ukraine. It's just incorrect, actually. Um, it's, not, it's not true. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this, uh, I, I think Clint is on to something. Yeah. And first of all, it's You Clint, agree with him. It's, it's Clint Eastwood. You're voting for Donald Trump. I'm not voting for Donald Trump. He's empty chairs. I'm, I'm, I, look, I'm, I'm the last person to support the empty chair speech. You are. I think it was absolutely great. Um, the thing that, that makes the Donald Clint right is that yeah. Donald Trump has broken up the boundaries about how we can talk and what we can say in a political realm. Sure. A lot of that is garbage talk, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's playing to the worst of humanity. Some of it is opening up possibilities to talk about, let's say, foreign policy. The only speech at the 2012 DNC or RNC mm -hmm. that uh, put uh, uh, foreign policy uh, up under question was the chair speech. Clint Eastwood, we all forget about it, but he's like, we should have the troops come home from Afghanistan. Like, whoa, this is at a Republican convention. Donald Trump won South Carolina, yeah. bashing the Iraq War, bashing the Bush family. So he created that space. That's a good thing. The problem That's is 90% of the stuff That's what Glenn Reynolds is said in Reason Magazine. Jesse Walker did a survey of all sorts of uh, free market, uh, limited government luminaries, and one of the people, Glenn Reynolds, who responded, uh, said that Trump will be the least likely to start another war. Therefore, he begrudgingly was kind of not really supporting him, but not unsupporting him either.